Welcome. Let's go ahead and add some sound effects and animation to our interactive kiosk. Now we could choose each of the objects separately and go ahead and animate and create an entrance effect like that. And we want to verify and make sure that we're at least after previous. You, you may want some with previous. What this will do is this will make this automatic so that we're not um, really locked into the kiosk mode yet but um, when you do, you want to make sure everything's automatic so that uh, your, your, your button clicks are sort of disabled and this will help uh, things work smoothly. Um, I'll go ahead and select this text and give it, uh, let's see, we'll, maybe we'll fade that in. And if you notice here, after previous, let's take a look at the animation pane, that you'll see that things do not have a mouse next to them, they have a little timer and that shows that they're sort of automatic. Now what you really want to do is not not make these very long in duration. So I like to go down to about a quarter second. If you play, there we go, something very quick like that. And let's say we want to animate this, we can choose, uh, well there's a pretty, pretty good one in here. Let's see, if we don't like any of the ones you see, you can go to more entrance effects. <coughs> And let's see what we have here. Uh, we have a grow and turn. Eh, that's not a good one for that. How about if we had spiral in? Yeah, it makes it look like it's flying in. And we'll have that. <clears throat> let's put that first, actually. We'll bring that up and move that in. Let's make it a little faster, about a half a second. And then everything else will be after previous. So we'll make that after previous. And once that, let's see what we have here. We'll play that, comes in, and let's bring our buttons in. Boom. And I'm going to control, click, click. And then I'm going to go around and get all the lines. So click, and click, and click. So I'm just holding the control key down while I'm selecting multiple items. So what we're going to do is we're going to have those. I think we're going to have those wipe. And then what we'll do is we'll go around and change the options. So for this one, being this one right here, one, let's have that wipe from the left, like that, and then we'll have that elbow connector do the same thing, wipe from the left, and then we'll take this object, and we'll have that one wipe from the right, and then that elbow connector, do the same thing, wipe from the right, and let's say this, this button will have it wipe from the right, and then if we can, we'll take this elbow connector and we'll have it wipe actually from the bottom. Suits that perfectly. And let's see what we have here. We'll play it from right here from the buttons. And we'll make each one of those. So we'll shift and click. Selects all of them. We'll have them after previous and we'll bring them quite quickly. And let's play that from there again this time. And if you wanted to, you can match your elbow connector up so we can move that one up to that snipped diagonal and this elbow connector up to there so now your button will come up then elbow then button then elbow then button then elbow so let's see if that works let's see how it looks one two and three very good now we should probably animate this guy let's have that just float like that and we'll have that after previous. We could we could leave this one a little slow because what we'll do is we'll do this set. Now remember, there's some. If you saw part one, you'll notice that there are multiple objects. I'm gonna have to move this text out of the way just so I can select that box. And then I'm going to have to select this text and the button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have that fly in all from the uh, from the right and then let's put the text back. Now I had to do that because I wasn't being able to select it. And we'll do that. And what we'll do is we'll have all of these guys come out together. So we'll have this come with previous and this one with previous and then we'll do this one instead of on click we'll have it go with previous so that as that diagonal floats in that guy sliding in right there and that's how we animate entrance effects 
We could do the same thing for our informational slides, and I suggest you do that. Make them all consistent. Go through them. And I'd like to show you one thing. Now, I think you understand how to do that, but I'd like to show you something about this, um, animating this for the uh, a chart. You can take a chart data, and you can animate it with an entrance effect. For example, let's say um, wipe and choose it from bottom. Now, the one thing I want everyone to know is that under the options, you can choose by series, and it will animate all the individual data series. So that's a really good thing to do. And make sure, of course, you put all of that after previous so that you have everything automatic. Now, to add sounds, it's very important that before you add your sounds on buttons, um, to make sure that you have inserted the hyperlink already. If you insert the hyperlink, you'll come up with an edit hyperlink dialog box where you add your screen tip, and that's the important part here. If you add the sound first using the insert action, you lose that dialog box. So you'll see that right now. I'm going to take this rotors button, and we're going to now insert an action on it, and for the mouse over, Let's go ahead and play a sound. And I don't like any of the ones we have here, so I'm going to go to Other Sound. We'll go into our folder. And let's see what we have. We have a servo. We have um, a light servo. I think we'll choose a light servo. And then for the mouse click, we'll play a sound. Now, I made a click sound. There's a click in here, but I made another one. So I'll just choose my click sound. And I think for the gimbal, actually, you know what? We'll switch that up probably. Let's go here. Let's go action, mouse over. We'll play a sound. And I'm going to use the light servo for that one. And then for mouse click, we'll do our click sound. And then we'll switch that back. Let's go back to rotors. And we'll go for the mouse over instead of the servo. I think I actually have one for the rotors. Uh, let's see, light servo, heavy servo. Maybe we'll use the heavy servo for that one. And we'll do, let's see, mouse click, we're all set. And the camera, well, we'll just do a camera sound, I guess. That one's built in. We'll do a mouse over. We'll do the camera. And for the mouse click, we'll just do our standard mouse click sound. And I think for drone data, we could probably do a rollover. We'll do, play a sound, let's see, the cash register, because it's the drone sales for a group of years. <clears throat> and then as they click, we could use the standard click or the click sound that we made. So that's how you add basic sounds. So if we test that, when we roll over those, we hear the sound. And if we click... And then we can add one to our main menu. Let's go ahead and do that. So with our main menu button, let's go and insert an action. Mouse over. We're going to play a sound. I have one somewhere. Let's see here. Other sound. I have my main menu main sound. Menu. And I think on the mouse click, we'll just do... Uh, let's just do our click sound. And now instead of doing that for each one, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy that button. We're going to go into each one of these, delete the previous one, and paste it. And what it will do is it will remember that. It will remember the hyperlink information. It will remember the insert actions information. And now they're all consistent. Now I want to go back here one more time. And now I want to show you what I mean by once you've inserted the hyperlink and then gone and add in an action, you do not have that dialog box back. So look, it's back to this. Whereas before, if you had, you know, insert drone data, and you didn't have the action on there, you'd have that, uh, that dialog box back. But I think I already did this one too. We already added an action, so we're not going to get it back. So make sure you do all of your insert hyperlinks before you do that. Let's go back here, and why don't we add a soundtrack. So let's go to insert audio from our PC and if we have a soundtrack going on let's see we'll just go to our music and pick a song 
And what I suggest you do is play in the background. What that'll do is if you play in the background, it'll automatically hide it, loop it, play it across the slides. But most importantly, what it does is if you look here in your animation pane, it aligns it to the top. Even though it's the last thing I did, um, it put it on top because I'm going to play it automatically in the background. Now I do su suggest you go to your playback tab and lower the volume. It should be in the background, it should be unobtrusive, and let's test it out. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it.